All right, so in today's video, I wanna talk about how to get good at drawing really fast. This is the way I did it, and this is the way a lot of people who I know who are professional artists have done it. And it's not a get rich quick sort of scheme where you know it's the secret, you don't have to do any work, it's a shortcut. It still takes a lot of work, but this is what I have found is the fastest, most efficient way to get good at drawing. There might be better ways, but from my experience, this is the secret. So, um, it's going to require a lot of different things all working together, but one of the big things that helped me get good at drawing really fast was practicing drawing other people's artwork. Now, this doesn't mean drawing other people's artwork and then passing it off as your own. That's not good. That's plagiarizing. What I'm talking about is doing studies, doing drawings of other work with the intention of learning how they draw, how they're thinking when they're drawing that, and trying to get it as accurate and similar as possible so that you can learn what's going through their head as they create this picture. And for me, I did this all the time in high school and in my first semester of college, I was constantly finding art that I really liked that I wanted to be able to draw like and copying it and trying to replicate it as easily, or not as easily, but as uh, accurately as possible. Now, this approach, doesn't just magically make you a good drawer. There's lots of things that you are going to have to have in addition to that, including studying the fundamentals and really just lots and lots of practice. But this is one way that I found. So I wanted to, I was looking through some of my old sketchbooks and I wanted to show you guys some of the examples that, um, of where I did this and how later it was able to influence my art and what I was able to learn from it. So, um, let's see. So first here, I want to show you this page in my sketchbook, this spread. Um, this is, this one on the left here is, I can't remember what the creature is called, but it is a, it's a creature from World of Warcraft concept art. And I saw, I thought the colors are really cool. Um, I thought the anatomy was pretty cool. And so I copied it as pretty much as accurately as possible, got all the same colors. I didn't use the same medium because I didn't have access to digital stuff yet. So I was using colored pencils and watercolor, um, and ink and stuff like that markers. But um, I remember this one being, before this, I was a little bit hesitant about using lots of color and I wasn't very good at it. And I remember seeing this and thinking, wow, that's so colorful, but it looks so good. And having this be sort of a jumping off point where I felt more comfortable doing that. This one over here is um, a picture of Iron Spidey from the Civil War comics. And I just thought he was so cool. And the art for him was so dynamic. The artist did such a good job. And this one really helped me develop an idea of comic book lighting and blocking in shadows and big shapes. And you could see I didn't actually quite finish it all the way. His leg here, I just it was taking a long time. I was using a really fine ballpoint pen. You can see all the individual strokes here. But, um, it was still a really good learning lesson and I really enjoyed doing it. And like I said, doing these things really helped me learn to draw much quicker and develop a style. Here's another one. Um, Nivik Cyclops. This is a Magic the Gathering card. Let's get this in here. And I just thought it looked really cool. Thought it'd be fun to draw. And once again, another one I didn't finish, but even only going this far uh, really did help me learn a lot of things and develop a lot of stuff with my art. Um, let's look at, I want to show you another one, another couple really quick. So this is um, some art by um, LD Austin, who does some really cool dinosaurs and uh, prehistoric art. And these are two of my favorite prehistoric mammals. This is Platybelodon and this is Dinotherium. And uh, yeah, it was it was just something that I saw and thought, man, that looks so realistic, even though it's a creature that no one's ever seen before. We've only seen their skeletons. I want to learn how to be able to do that. And so, um, yeah, I just copied it and tried to get it as close as possible. And that ended up going on to really inform my own style of drawing prehistoric creatures, dragons, you know, fantasy creatures, dinosaurs, all sorts of stuff by how they did their art. Now, um, like I said, this isn't a shortcut. It's going to take a lot of practice. And um, those are just a small handful of the drawings I did of other people's art. There's 
dozen sketchbooks full of me doing studies of other art and this is the way the masters used to learn if you went to uh, an atelier when you know back in the renaissance times or slightly after that and you wanted to become a professional painter this is how they would teach you you would sit down you would look at a work by one of the masters like leonardo da vinci or someone like that and you would sit down look at one of their paintings and try and recreate it stroke for stroke you would analyze the painting super closely look at every single brush stroke and try and match it stroke for stroke and go through the exact same process they did now this doesn't you don't do this so that you paint exactly like them you do this so that you can learn a bunch of different techniques and styles and culminate it into your own style and doing this like i said isn't it isn't a quick and easy route but it is quicker I think than just kind of roughing it on your own, you know, use some of the tools and techniques that people before you who have been successful have done instead of having to scavenge everything else by yourself. I think there is value in coming up with your own techniques and things like that. Um, and I don't want to discredit that that's totally valid. And I think there's room to do that as well. But if you're looking to develop your drawing skills as quickly as possible, or your painting skills, even. For me, this was by far the best way, and once I started doing this, I noticed a huge leap in my quality of drawings because even after I would copy something, I'd go to draw something outside of my own imagination. I had all these tools that I had learned on how to draw different things or how to render something a certain way, how to make it feel or look like certain lighting or texture that because I had had this problem solved to figure out how they did it now in my own art i could apply it as well so that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed um just some quick updates uh next week uh yeah so next friday we'll be doing another live stream we're going to be doing them at 10 o'clock in the morning mountain standard time so 10 a.m mountain standard time um instead of 12 p.m so make sure you mark that if you're going to come join us and uh yeah we'll be painting and answering questions things like that so it's a good time. It's always fun. I like getting to feel like I'm getting to know you guys a little bit better. And then uh, also, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, hit that notification button. Hitting that notification button makes it so that every time I release a new video, you will get a notification letting you know that it's out. Um, if not, then being, being subscribed does virtually nothing. So um, yeah, make sure you hit that notification bell. And then also just to let you guys know, Udemy, which is where I do all of my online courses um, that I sell is running a big sale until Cyber Monday, I believe is when to end. So between now and Monday, uh, you can go on there and take any of my courses for only $9.99, which is like over 90% off on some of them. So go check that out. Um, you only have a couple days left and I will see you guys in the next one.